So what you've been doing is putting a quadratic equation, quadratic function into a computer and you have been looking at what came out. So here's the shape of the graph. Uh, you have been identifying three coordinates at the moment. So those two and then this one using the computer. So in this case, this coordinate would have been minus one, zero. This coordinate would have been five, zero. And this coordinate would have been two, negative one. All right. Now, what we were hoping you would be picking out is that if you take the axis of symmetry, go straight down the middle, the equation, okay, the equation of the axis of symmetry is basically going to be the x coordinate of the vertex. So I can see that I've got two negative nine there, so it's going to be x equals two is the equation of the x right? So basically what you're doing is you're making a link between this coordinate and the axis of symmetry. So if you can find the coordinate, you can find the axis of symmetry. But equally, if you can find the axis of symmetry, you can find the coordinate. Which is All right. The, the next thing they were basically hoping you'd find is, well, if this coordinate here is at two, because x equals two, this point here is halfway between those. So negative one to five is a difference of six. What's halfway half of six is three. So six divided by two is three. So if we go three back from five, we get two. If we go three forwards from negative one, we get two, which is the coordinate. All right. Now, there's something else then. So we're making those links. So we know the axis of symmetry is halfway between those two points. The coordinate of the vertex is on the axis of symmetry. See how thin it is. So really what we're looking for now is, well, is there any way of finding those two points? And there is. So what I'm going to get you to do now is I'm going to ask you to factorise this how to factorise it. So this has only got 1x squared, so it should be two numbers that multiply to make 5 and add to make, remember it's multiplied to make negative 5, so the brackets must have x plus and x minus. So two numbers that multiply to make five and then add to make four. Okay, if the negative is this, that means the bigger number must be negative. So negative five times one. That does give me negative five. If I do negative five add one, do I get negative? Yes, you do. So actually, we've got y equals, it's still y equals, but we've got positive 1 and yes. Uh, no, sorry, yes, it will always be a whole number. You don't, sometimes you can't factor that's what we're to work out after the right? But we're looking at ones that can be factored. Now, do you notice anything about the coordinates of these two points? Okay, this point and this point. And then do you notice anything about the factorised?
They're just different. Like, one is part of the world, and they're part of the other. But do you notice that the one and five are the same thing? Yeah. So we've got negative one here, and we've got positive one. We've got positive five, and we've got negative five. Well, it's not just the fact they're switching. Basically, to explain it, the, do you notice how the y coordinate is zero? So what we want to do is we actually want to find when x plus 1 times x minus 4 equals 0, because the y equals 0, right? Now, this is what we call, we're going to use the null factor law, which says if two things multiply to make 0, then they must be 0. So basically, x plus 1 has to equal 0, and x minus 5 has to equal 0. Okay. So what add 1 makes 0? Negative 1. What subtract 5 makes 0? Think about it more, Luke. What subtract 5 makes 0? 5. x equals 5. So do you notice, like you've said, I'll do a bit of switch. But it's because, actually, what subtract 5 makes 0? Well, positive 5, the opposite. Right? So these are the two numbers here, look. These are the ones that actually give you those two numbers. So these two things multiply to make the answer zero. So if you've got two things that multiply to make zero, at least one of those things must be zero. It's the only way you can make it. It's a null factor. Null means zero. So what does that mean for us? Well, if you think about it, if we can find the two x coordinates there, which we can because we can factorise. Well, if we can find those two coordinates, we can then find the axis of symmetry, which means we can find the vertex without having to do the graph. And then what we can do is we can sketch the graph. What happens if that's zero? So, x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 5. So, for that to equal 0, which is this line here, there's 0, look, 0 and 0. For that times that to equal 0, either x plus 1 has to equal 0, or x minus 5 has to equal 0. How do I make x plus 1 equal 0? What must x be? Negative 1 because negative 1 add 1 makes 0. So what minus 5 makes 0? 5. 5 minus 5 makes 0. So x has to be 5. Yes. So it's not just it is opposite. It's, there is a reason why it is the opposite. So, what we want to be able to do is, if I give you an equation, you should be able to find the x-axis intercepts, the axis of symmetry, and then the vertex coordinate. The axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry. Well, that's the line that goes to the middle. That's what you've been doing in your axis. Oh, thing that goes down the middle, not the y-axis that you just done. The one that goes through the middle. The middle of the. The middle of the parabola. This orange one. Okay. Yeah. So we can find that. So let's um, 
if I give you a question, so these notes will be there if you're still making them, right? So if I said, find the x axis intercepts and then the axis of symmetry and the vertex coordinates of Let's do y equals x squared. Um, let's do minus 3x minus 10. So that's what we want to be able to do. I guess I, we will probably have to do this one at the beginning of next lesson. So make sure you've written that down and we'll get on with it next lesson.